Let's bring in Peggy McCown, Artistic Director of the Contemporary American Theater Festival. Peggy, good morning. Good morning. How are you all? And we're great. It's wonderful to have you here. And I had the pleasure um, earlier this morning, uh, our co-hosts today, Matt Miller and John Gilstrap. And John is fairly new to the area. And he asked me, he lives near Shepherdstown, he asked me about the CATF and uh, what's the story behind it. And I thought, Mr. Gilstrap... He's an author, you know, so he writes stuff. You are in for a treat <laughs> with Peggy McCowan today because this is right up your alley. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, go ahead. You have a new season, and you've selected we some do. plays. Can you talk to us about these? Yes. So this year, we have plays that are um, really about the idea of love, and loss and what it means to live in this time, especially coming out of the pandemic and all the things that we have encountered. And so I feel like this season is really about how we interact with one another and uh, very accessible stories for everybody to come in here. Can you tell us how you selected these plays? Yes. Well, I read a lot of plays. <laughs> 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 the last year or so. And uh, actually, one of them is a co-production with a theater in Lowell, Massachusetts called Merrimack Rep. And the artistic director there is an art, is a good friend of mine, but also an artist who has worked for CATF several times and has directed several plays here. She directed The Cape, for example. And her name is Courtney Sale. And she introduced me to this play that she had commissioned. And I read it and loved it. I love the artist, Dale Orlander Smith. And so we immediately gr agreed to do that. So we will be co producing it with them. And it will then move to New York to Rattlestick Theater and a couple other theaters across the country. So that's very exciting. And that play is Spiritus um, uh, Virgil's Dance by Dale Orlander Smith. And then another play came to us because Jose Rivera is connected to and has worked with our new managing director, Jeff Griffin. And Jeff said, you know, you should read this play. It's pretty good. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I read it and uh, loved it. And we did a reading of that in the fall. And so Jose's play will be here and Jose will be directing it. And for people who may not know the name of Jose Rivera, he is the first Puerto Rican screenwriter nominated for an Academy Award for his movie Motorcycle Diaries. And he's also a well-known playwright in the industry. So some plays came to me through other people, and then some plays came to me uh, because I just read a lot of plays from agents and from an organization in New York called New Dramatists. One of the plays is from them. Okay. Could you run down the other plays? And I know there are some familiar authors there that have been with uh, CATF in the past. That's right. So those are two, Dale's piece and Jose's piece. Jose's piece is called Your Name Means Dream. And uh, it is about a elderly woman who is in need of care. Interesting, given the segment you just had. Mm -hmm. And her Thank you for son, listening. Mm -hmm. Yes. And her son decides that he is going to hire a caregiver for her. And it turns out at a certain point in the play that that caregiver is an AI entity. And so how that journey continues and what happens in the end is a very interesting part of that story. And then we have a play called The Overview Effect, which is actually set against the context of the race to space. And it is about an air disaster investigator who is trying to find out why one of the rockets exploded. And uh, in the course of that investigation, we also watch her deal with her own sense of loss and how to find love and, and what it means to live in this world. But it's sort of in the context of space and how we're trying to find life in other places or the opportunity to have life in other places. And then we have a play called Fever Dreams of Animals on the Verge of Extinction, which is written by Jeffrey Lieber, who was the co-creator of the TV series Lost, if people remember that show. Mm -hmm. And this is a love triangle between a man, a husband and a wife, and the lover. 
and it has all these amazing twists and unexpected turns, and it's very funny, and um, I think people will really enjoy that show. And what's that one called again, Peggy? That's called Fever Dreams Dreams. of Animals on the Verge of Extinction. It's a long title. It's shortened on the (laughs) schedule as just fever, by the way, if you look at the CATF calendar for July. That is correct. (laughs) Or else it would have to say continued on next month. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Um, and then the last one is uh, Redeemed by Tisa Hutchinson, and she is really the playwright that we have produced quite a bit. But for people who may know her work, uh, she did Whitelisted from last year. She did The Wedding Gift. She did Dead and Breathing with us. This play is a very different play for her. It's kind of a departure from her usual work, and it is a two-person play, and it takes place in the visiting section of a prison and the prisoner has just committed a hate crime and has asked to see the sister of the man that he killed because he believes he's on the path of redemption and so it's a very interesting story and like typical two Chisa's other plays it does have a really fabulous twist at the end that really surprises people and these will run July 7th through the 30th Peggy do I have that right? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, very nice. And how do you get tickets for the season this year? You can go online right now at catf.org and just go to the box office page of tickets. And uh, those are on sale there. Or you can call the box office, and that information is also on the website. And uh, I just want to remind everybody that we have a discount for West Virginia citizens. So we have West Virginia weekdays. So if anybody buys a ticket for the weekday, and we perform Tuesday through Friday, in addition to the weekends, you can get a 30% discount on tickets. Nice. And are you doing a preview showing this year? We are. We will have previews. I think some of those previews start July 1, uh, or maybe July 3rd. Uh, but early in July, we have our previews. Okay. Now, I will go to New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, who has written screenplays before. John? I have. Never written Excellent. a stage play, but I've written screenplays. Uh, so I, are these shown one after the other in a single theater? What is the venue? I guess there's the easier question. Well, well, I'm so glad you said that because this is big new stuff for us this season. We are moving to four different venues this year. Last in previous years, we've been in three. One of them is the Shepherdstown Opera House on German Street. Hmm. So we will have Fever Dreams performing there this year. And then we have two shows in the Marinoff Theater on the Shepherd University campus, one show in Studio 112 and one show in the Frank Center. So you that's where the spaces are, but in a two-day period, you can still see all five of the shows. And there are multiple showings of each of these plays? That's correct. That's correct. So every show has anywhere from four to eight performances a week. Wow. So, and, and these are full, these aren't one acts. These are, these are full up plays. Uh, these are full up, fully produced projections, costumes, sound, music, astronauts in spacesuits, fully produced, full-length play. I do want to see the onstage weightlessness for the astronauts. I think that would be quite the challenge. (laughs) They say when they turn the power switch off and the crash to Earth is very deadly. Yeah, Yeah, I want to see that too. (laughs) Matt Miller. My question is, you mentioned all of the plays that you have read to come to these five that are going to be produced. What is that process like? How quickly do you get into a screen writing and reading and go, no? Or how quickly do you go, wow, I'm intrigued already? Well, (laughs) so I... Be honest. (laughs) I know, I know. Well, the thing is, when I read a script, I feel like I have to get to the end because... I'm, I don't want to miss anything, right? I don't, I, I, sometimes it takes a play, like we call them a slow burn, right? <laughs> sometimes it takes a play a little while to really get to the interesting part. And so I try to make myself read the play all the way through. Now, sometimes I don't quite make it, but I really try. <laughs> and 
usually if a show or a script captures me within the first, you know, 10 pages, I know it's going to be a pretty good script. But I at least give myself a few pages into it before I give up. Do you ever, you know, lay out your, I'm sure you you have to kind of narrow it down. And if you read 100, you go, all right, maybe these 20 and look at them again and go, all right, we're down to these 10 to these five. Do you hold any over and go, not this year, but maybe next? Yes. Yes, absolutely, because one of the things I think about every season is trying to create a really rich variety of theatrical experiences and different uh, kind of storylines. And so if I already have something that feels similar in the season that I really want to do this year, but I think it's a really good script, I might put it on the possible for next year list. So I do go through the scripts and think, this is a play I would produce. Whether it's this year or next year at some point, that's a yes play. And then the other plays just go into a different folder. <laughs> Is that the same as, as saying, well, this one's not good enough for this year, but next year maybe the competition won't be as stiff, and therefore this one will be good again? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> but, but one of the things I do think about is whether the script just needs some development time, mm-hmm. Right. So if I think there's a really good idea there and there's some good writing there, but it's just not quite baked as a play, it may be something that I feel like we should invest the time in developing with the playwright. And so I would look at that as something to do in our fall reading series to work on for the year and get ready for the summer. But it usually revolves around a really interesting idea or story and some quality writing in there. When were these decisions made? I mean, we ha- you, you got to make the decision, then you got to have casting, and then you've got to you know all the, all the stuff that goes into production. So, when did you lock down what the plays are going to be? Not early enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> Peggy's working on her stand up back here today. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny you said that because I was just in, uh, I just was in New York last week doing casting too. But I t- am trying to get about six months to a year ahead in the decision-making process because it is just helpful to us, you know, to have that time to prepare. But here's what happens. I wanted to announce this season to at least the staff and the, you know, insiders in January, but I saw this amazing reading in December, and as soon as I saw that reading, I said, I want to produce that play this summer. And so... It took a little time to work with the playwright and the agents and everybody involved to see if we could get it. And so sometimes a really good thing hits right at the very end, and that can shift the whole season. Peggy McCallum is our guest. She is the artistic director of the Contemporary American Theater Festival. And are these five plays, is it, is it five or six this year, Peggy? It is five plays this year. Five plays. Mm-hmm. Are these all world premieres? They are indeed. So this is the first time these plays will be performed. That's pretty cool. Has that have you done that before? I don't think we have ever done a season that had all world premieres. Uh, so I do think this may be a first for us. There was an economic study, um, an impact study on what the CATF means to Shepherdstown mm-hmm. a few years back in the surrounding areas, Peggy. I don't remember what that figure was. Maybe you do, but I know it was in the millions in terms of economic impact. That's right. Of course I remember. It was $5.8 million of economic impact. That's pretty... Yeah. You can imagine the pandemic when you couldn't do this, what kind of an effect that had on the economy locally along with everything else. So it's great to bring that back. Are you are you thinking you're back 100% with uh, tickets sold and audience and, uh, and, and attention and everything this year? Well, you know, I'm really hoping that, but... Across the country, in terms of other theaters and what we're seeing, the audiences are starting to come back, and I think they're definitely growing, but they still do not appear to be at the levels that they were prior to the pandemic. Now, I'm hoping it'll be different at CATF, but we'll see. You know, a very exciting prospect to see a world premiere mm-hmm. of a play. A few years ago, probably six or seven years ago, uh, my wife and I went to the arena stage for this unknown premiere of a play called Dear Evan Hansen, 
which of course mm-hmm. has taken over New York as one of the, the number one plays. And yeah. mm-hmm. we saw it when it was nothing, and now it's done this big blow up. And I, I feel sort of this paternal pride to it. We did that with Blue Man Group too, a thousand years ago in New York, <laughs> mm-hmm. down in the off off Broadway in, in in the Lower Village. So it's it, yeah, they're awesome. It's exciting to go to these things. People should go. Yeah, to this day, mm-hmm. Gilstrap still has paint on him. He can't get on. <laughs> <laughs> gonna start using water based. Right. <laughs> Matt Miller. You and- know, we've had we've had some folks from Blue Man Group work for us. Uh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, as world premieres, does that mean like if if you go in early July and go see the same show in late July that there might be some little nuances that are a little different here and there because each performance is like whoa I learned something more let's try doing something this way. Yes, absolutely the case. And uh there are two things about that experience. One is that if you get hooked on the excitement of that new play experience as an audience member, many of them do want to come back, right? They do want to come back and see how it has transformed from the first time they saw it, maybe to the second time they see it at the end of the summer. And the thing that really happens there, too, is that when those first audiences come, they bring a response and a participation in the experience that changes the way that story is told and what those words mean. And the actors really learn from that and they adjust, right? They, they make changes and they grow the script in a way that becomes more um, interesting, more confident in terms of what the storyline is. And it really does evolve over the period of time because, you know, unlike a play that's been previously produced when there are reviews and you know how audiences responded to it, You have no idea how the audience is going to respond until they show up. I've got to imagine it helps you in casting as well because an actor or actress has to look at it and go, I get to really define what this character may be as opposed to having already seen it and trying to live up to maybe what some other actor or actress has done. Right. It is a very exciting opportunity for many actors to come and create the role. Right. Because the other thing is that once it goes into publication, the script will say who was in the first production, who designed it, where it happened, all those things. And so then they also get to be sort of published as the actor that created that role the first time. And I will tell you, when I was in auditions in New York this week, a number of actors walked in and said, oh, my gosh, this script or this this is the most amazing thing I've read. I really would like to do this work. And so. There definitely is an appeal to creating something for the first time. I know in years past you've had actors that have been involved in various productions. Will that be the case again, that that they're learning lines for a couple of different performances? Well, it's interesting you should ask that. Uh, We are not repping any of the actors this year. So every actor that is here will only be in one role this year. Great. So that's different for us. Mm Mm-hmm. Peggy, some of the actors that we'll see this year, I, I know it was a couple of years ago we were doing an interview with one of the folks appearing in one of your plays, and it dawned on me about 10 minutes in the interview as to why he looks so familiar, and it was because he was in The Sopranos. <laughs> he, was, mm-hmm. he was in a Sopranos yeah. episode. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Um, well, I'm not fully cast yet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I don't know yet. I think a couple of people already that are in the hopper people will recognize from tv shows for sure but i do know one thing that is sort of interesting um we have an actor now who was in a band a punk band that's called oh i'm not going to get this right um gogol ballad i think Mm -hmm. and people may recognize her from that band actually okay uh peggy again how do we get tickets to catf this year please go to our website catf.org and right there it'll give you a little button and a link to go straight to the box office to get tickets and you can also call the box office that number is on there as well and they are available right now You are a delightful person. It is always so much fun to have you on the program, and we all appreciate the work that you do there. 
Thank you so much, and thank you all for the work that you do. You have a great loving and programming. You have a great sense of humor. I think what you should do before the plays is just kind of loosen up the crowd with about five minutes of stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Warm them up. Warm up that crap. All right, I'll work on that. <laughs> I don't think you have to. I think you got it down already. Have a great day, Peggy. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you all.